Yeah, well, he's here. Quick, we'll get left behind. First impressions is they look really nice. You know, the first thing I noticed was the spokes. They're wider than the normal aero spoke. Second thing I noticed was the rims are a matte finish and they've got a dimpled effect on them at a regular interval. And the third thing is the stickers are shiny on a matte background, so they stand out. Now these are road wheels and as roadies, we're always looking for perfection. Of course, it's no such thing as perfection, but we can certainly get some really nice equipment though. These got the rim tapes on them and they're like a semi nylon cloth and super team written on them. First thing we always want to know is how much do they weigh. So let's have a look. Front wheel, 640 grams. Rear wheel, 780 grams. So what's that together? 1420 grams considering the rim section. That's pretty good. Not the lightest wheel set I've seen, but certainly by far nowhere near the heaviest. So this is a raw matte carbon finish. There's no clear over the top. So you can't see any carbon fibre weaving at all, just the dimples. The shiny dacles are raised, slightly raised, so they are a sticker on the surface, but very well made and very well stuck on. If you really try, you could probably get them off. So they're not part of the surface of the rim, they're actually stuck on. Same with the UCI sticker. And the same with the Super Team logo. Slightly raised, but well stuck on. The rim shape is rounded at the top here and slightly curved on the sidewall as well. They're all pretty much going that way now, rounded with a curved sidewall. I think gone are the days when they used to be quite sharp, come to a fair bit of a point. Those days are pretty much gone. There might be a few manufacturers that are still making them, but at the moment, they're all going for the rounded profile of rim nowadays. Now you can see, although it's not all that obvious, but it's certainly there, the waviness of the inside profile of the rim there. You can see that. Of course, it's in copying zip. They came up with that idea of copying a whale fin or a shark fin. It's supposed to be something like more aerodynamic and less affected by the side winds. Is this wavy profile any more aerodynamic than other rims? Well, there's plenty of other pro teams out there just using ordinary rims, although be it deep section carbon, of course. And well, they seem to be going all right still. The second thing you notice is the dimples in the rim. And no, they're not just a sticker. They're actually in the carbon mold itself. You can definitely feel it. Of course, whether it actually works or not, like a golf ball going through the air? That's another question. The inside width of the rim, 22. And the outside width, 29 millimeters. The depth, of course, is varying because of the wavy profile, it's varying. I've got 50.62 and on the lowest part, 48.6. So they're pretty much 50 millimetres. My rim tape's off. Have a look at the rim itself, the bed of the rim. This part of the rim where the holes are is called the bed of the rim. And as you can see for each spoke, there's the hole drilled. So what we see here is typical drilling after moulding, which is pretty much the only way to put holes in a rim with a little shard sticking out only on one spoke hole. That's no problem. Having a look inside these rims with an endoscope, firstly the nipple. The spoke length is correct, not too long sticking out and not too short. There's the nipple there showing it's the hex head. You can see there's no washers under the nipple to help spread the load on the rim. If the rim is too thin at this point, after a while the nipple will break through the carbon fibre. Not saying this is the case with these rims, but it's just worthy of noting. And moving away from the nipple to the underside of the rim bed, and it all looks very nice, very smooth along there. Well compressed. Here we see some wrinkling happening on both sides of the walls of the rim. And it stops at the bed of the rim. And a clean intersection here between the wall of the rim and the bed. At this nipple, there's four wrinkles going in all directions. And very difficult to tell where we are on the rim here. A bit of a hodgepodge, carbon fibre sheeting going everywhere. 
and back to a that's a very nice clean look a little bit of a wrinkle there on the bed <laughs> looks like a few stalagmites and stalactites of carbon fiber there yeah a bit messy and not far away again gone back to nice and clean ah now there's a wrinkle going all the way down from the wall across the rim bed and a cross hatch of wrinkles here here at least you know it's carbon fiber you can see the weaving of the carbon and more wrinkling so altogether I'd say not the best inside of a rim I've seen certainly room for improvement so for truing the wheels access is through the hole in the rim with a five and a half mil socket rim tapes are quite nice at the join they're strong and rim tapes are not too thin because if it's too thin it's going to sink into the holes with a high pressure see your holes here you have a thin rim tape you pump your tires up to about 90 pounds per square inch if you do and it's going to the rim tape's going to press inside those holes and can split and then get the puncture these are not going to allow that that's fine and as for sitting on the rim i don't know if you can see that but they're sitting on the rim that's fine that's good now because we've got the wide rims which is a trend these days these rim tapes are not covering all the way so you can't use them for tubeless if you want to run tubeless on these wheels you're going to have to get a tubeless rim tape special rim tape to seal it up so these rim tapes are not for tubeless on the valve hole nicely done nicely drilled out nice and clean nothing's going to catch on there um, the other thing is you can see from the valve hole I'll give you a close-up is how thick the carbon fiber is you can actually see from the inside of the rim here how thick that carbon fiber is it must be pretty strong there and on the outside part it's a bit thinner there quite a bit thinner but very thick on the inside that's probably the thickest i've ever seen on a carbon rim the spokes and as we said before look how thick they are let's measure them five millimeter wide they are what brand these spokes are I don't know it doesn't say on their website it just says carbon spoke 3.4 3.4 being the weight 3.4 grams so there you go are they any good don't know we don't know where they come from take them as they are in-house brand maybe however looking at the origin of the spoke head in the hub it's very similar it looks like a nipple but it's not it's glued on and then it's inside the hub flange there and it goes up here to the insertion and that's the adjustability up here and it looks very familiar to the spokes on the drive wheels the elite drive wheels remember them very similar so maybe the same company that made the spokes for the elite drive wheels which are carbon make these same spokes as well well let's have a look at the thickness of these carbon spokes most carbon spokes on the carbon wheels are 1.3 millimeters as you can see in the right hand side but the super team carbon spoke is 0.64 millimeters very thin and the picture in the middle going back to the widths of the spokes you can see how wide the super team carbon spoke is compared to most carbon spokes spoke count okay so we've got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen on the rotor side on the brake rotor side on the front wheel and one two three four five six seven on the non-rotor side so twice as many on the rotor side that's good and the fact that they're crossing as well is good very strong on the rotor side don't need the strength so much on this side but you definitely need it where the rotor is where your braking is so that's good for the rear wheel we've got two four six eight ten twelve fourteen and again radial spokes one two three four five six seven so identical 14 on the drive side and non-drive side but this is where the rotor is interesting that they've gone radial on the rotor on the rear but here they've gone cross on the rotor on the front so why they don't do the cross here i don't know anyhow that's the way they've done it and when they do cross they don't touch as you can see they're not touching so that's good if you find a carbon spoked wheel where the spokes actually touch and they're separate spokes they're not joined at the middle and they touch they one goes under the other that would not be a good idea because there's slight amounts of flex on the wheels especially if you're a heavier rider and the spokes will rub and cause the wear especially on your carbon spokes you don't want that to happen so all your carbon spoked wheels they should not touch where they cross 
for de-stressing the wheels, making sure the spokes are all settled in and not going to move when you ride them under torque, under any power. Well, that's all done in the factory now. It's virtually eliminated. We don't have to worry about de-stressing our wheels like in the old days when we built them. So every single wheel set, especially carbon wheels, should be de-stressed in the factory. You don't need to worry about de-stressing them. Tension of the spokes is set for each wheel type in the factory to an ideal amount. However, it's important for the spokes to have an equal tension as possible and you can test this for yourself. Here I've got a plastic pen and you can hear the difference as well. We'll just tap these spokes on this side on the rear. That's actually very good, quite consistent. Let's try the other side. This is the rotor side. Mm, very good. Let's try the front wheel. That's quite high. Low. Low as well. See, they're the same. But these? Let's try this side. You can hear these, these are higher tension than the crossed ones. Still, that's quite consistent, that's good. Very pleased with the tension now. Now we've got the tension of each spoke down in writing. Plug the numbers into the tension calculator and what do we see? Not much variation at all. Very, very good. We'll start and we'll go down this way. Now we can see as 1.1 sits on nicely. So that's straight, that's good. Now we're measuring at the rim, remember. That's slightly pointing inwards, but it's just acceptable. That one's pointing quite significantly in. If I just adjust this camera so you can see a bit more. That's quite far in. I would say that's not acceptable. That should come out a bit. We've got one that's not. That's that's perfectly straight. See, that's good. That's good. That's a little bit in, but acceptable. That's good. And now we're back to the valve hole. So we had one on the rotor side of the rear wheel, which should be adjusted. Again, starting at the valve hole, but this time near the hub, up near the hub because you can get a twist as they go along as well. That's pointing inward slightly, but acceptable. That's good. That's slightly outwards, but acceptable. That's okay, slightly in. That's excellent. That's very good. And that's that one that's in a bit too far. Back to the valve hole. Let's see, that's a bit too far compared to that one which is slightly out. So we've got one that's definitely twisted all the way along. All right, let's try the free hub side. Starting at the valve hole, 1.1. Starting at the rim, that's excellent. 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 Looks like they've done their homework on this side. Excellent. It's very slightly. No, that's, that's still very, very good. Uh, excellent. Slightly inwards. Slightly, but still very, very, very good. Oh, perfect. Sli ah, now that one's a little bit far in, but it's nowhere near as out as the ones on the other side. That's still acceptable. And we've come to the valve hole again. So on the free hub side, where they cross, it's really, really good. It's just on the radial side on the rear wheel. We're slightly out. Front wheel starting at the valve hole. At the rim, slightly in. Excellent. 
Very good. Excellent. Slightly in, but acceptable. Excellent. 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 I think we have. No, no, no. Excellent. Excellent. That's acceptable. So, spoke twist, really, really good for these wheels, except for that one spoke on the rear wheel, no problem. I mean, if you're looking for perfection, like you're riding the Olympic Games in the 1K time trial or something like that, then you might want to make them absolutely perfect. But for normal riding conditions like you or I do, no problem. The hubs. Now on the website it says that they're ceramic bearings, so I'm assuming it's ceramic bearings all the way through, both the front two bearings and the four on the back, two in the free hub and two in the hub shell. So let's have a look at the hubs. Everybody wants to hear what the clutch sounds like, so slow. And fast. Now on the website it doesn't tell you what brand name these hubs are, it just says premium hub. So it just says super team ceramic and on the free hub ceramic. But you see the centre of the body of the hub is quite fat, it's not skinny. Big flange on one side on the rear wheel and a smaller flange on the rotor side. Front wheel, round sort of flange on one side and on the other it's a smaller, whatever sort of flange you want to call that. The bearing feel, they're very very smooth, buttery smooth. <laughs> Put butter in your bearings. You can't feel a thing on them. Of course ceramic bearings are like that, they're beautiful when they're new and after a while you get a little teeny little bit of dust or something in there See, that's perfect too. A little teeny little bit of dust and they start feeling terrible. Now these are absolutely perfect, cannot feel a thing. Okay, these hubs have NBK bearings and NBK was established in Taiwan in 1989 and then in 1998 they set up in China. Most of the bearings coming out of China now. So these are a hybrid ceramic bearing, so that means ceramic balls surrounded by steel races. And the sizes are fairly common, readily available. Pulling off the free hub and having a look at the clutch. So these hubs have, as all hubs are now going, the Star Ratchet system, which was originally designed by DT Swiss for their hubs. Now that almost every hub manufacturer is copying this DT design and calling it what they will, this company calls it the Planetary Ratchet system. No tools required to take it apart, great for easy maintenance. You can change the number of points of engagement and it's more reliable than the pull and spring as the power is spread over a larger area. If you want to make the clutch sound a bit quieter, you can put a little bit more grease in like this one has or vice versa, take some grease out to make the clutch louder. Again, NBK ceramic bearings both in the hub shell and in the free hub. Now the DT Star Ratchet and Spring are directly compatible with the Super Team Planetary Ratchet. To demonstrate, here's a DT180 hub. We're going to take out the Star Ratchet and Spring. And the splines on the free hub are exactly the same as the Super Team. Same sized clutch ring and same number of teeth. Same diameter spacer washer. Putting the DT Swiss Star Ratchet and Spring on the Super Team hub. Super Team free hub body back on, axle spacer back on, and there you go. DT Swiss clutch internals in the Super Team hub, no problem. Working fine. Doing it the other way around, here's a DT180 hub. It's the Super Team clutch ring and spring. Put it on the DT hub. Put on the DT free hub. DT axle spacer.
easy, so they're both directly compatible with each other. And nicely machined splines for the disc rotors. Clutch engagement, put the valve hole down the bottom, hold the free hub and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 16, 17, 18, halfway, so it's 36 engagements per revolution. The dishing, let's have a look, see how central they are. So we zero that on that side and on this side. Point 0.3, point 0.3 of a millimetre, that's very, very close, very good. Front wheel, zero, turn it over, and zero. So the front wheel's perfect, and we've got point, point 0.3 of a millimetre out on the rear one but that's excellent that's still very excellent sometimes I wonder whether they make these wheels they know that it's going on YouTube for you guys and they probably make them absolutely perfect but I don't know even if they did that shows you that they can do that they can make them really well so anyway that's 0.3 millimeter is non-existent now let's check how true the wheels are in measuring the horizontal true, sometimes rim dacles get in the way. You see a quick flick of the indicator needle. In the old days of aluminium rims, it used to be the join of the rim opposite the valve. So this rear wheel going up to just over 30, 32, 32 millimetres. Of course, the straighter the wheel, the better for rim brakes, but these are disc brake wheels, so it's still nice to know you're riding on near perfectly round wheels. Up to 25.25 millimeter. Such a small amount of movement. Up again, 18. Oh, 25. Okay, so 0.25 millimeters. Excellent. The vertical true. Now, of course, any tire would be out a lot more than these rims. So we've got 26 there, 40, that's half, that's a half a millimetre, 52, 53, 52. Okay, half a millimetre, so far 0.52. A very small stone on the road, 0.52 millimeter. Lastly, the rear vertical, 20, 20, 25, 25, any more, any advance on 25? 18, no, <laughs> 26, 28, 30, 34, 32, 34. Back to around the 20s, well, going back up to 30, 32, 32, 33. 33.33 millimetre, about the depth of a scratch. Well, you know what we're up to now? The best part, the only part that really matters, riding them, what are they like? Let's go and do it. Using the same tyres and tubes on all the wheel sets we test makes for a fair comparison of performance. Nice, easy fitting, not too tight, not too loose. This is the Psi Plus Cube. I thought I'd give it a go. It's a pocket-sized rechargeable pump and it goes up to 100 PSI. It takes longer to reach the desired pressure than a CO2 cartridge at about the same time as a mini hand pump. All works really well. One thing it would have been nice to have on this little pump is a pressure gauge. Bit of grease on the splines for the rotors and on the free hub body. Now I've seen it a couple of times before with wheel sets. When you put a new wheel set in, the brakes rub, the disc rubs on the brake pads. 
So that means that the disc somehow is slightly off where it should be. However, with these wheels, no rubbing, that's fine, they're perfect. To take a look at their website or order yourself a set of wheels, search www.superteam and it'll take you straight to the page for these all carbon ultra wheel sets. You can find out more information about their hub spokes and rims which we've talked about in this video anyhow by clicking on those circles with the pluses in them. Scrolling down to the options for buying, choose your free hub body type. Note there's no Campagnolo option, only Shimano or SRAM. Then your hub axle, either through axle or quick release. And the disc option, either six bolt or center lock. Press add to cart and then view cart. Go to the checkout page and then in the discount code box type in OzCycle05 and that'll get you a 5% discount. 5% of $1,000, hey, what's that? That's uh, a brand new tyre for your wheels. Alright, that's it. Finished another ride with the guys. Done five rides now with these uh, Super Team wheels. Very nice. The two first rides were very wet um, and way over a thousand metres of climbing. Certainly tested them there and they were fine. Uh, I mean, wet or dry. And the last three rides have been dry like today. Beautiful day, cold mornings, nevertheless. Uh, now we had a really fast downhill run, Paris Creek Road, I don't know if you know that one. But uh, yeah, they, were, they felt really nice, very stable, no problem there. They're nice wheels to ride, their aerodynamics, well, they perform pretty much like any 50mm that you can imagine. Once you get above 40 k's an hour, 38, 40, you can feel they're not quite as fast as a deeper section rim. So your 60s or 70s, or 80s if you ride 80s. Um, but they're certainly not slow, they're just the same as any other 50mm. Whether the shark fin effect design on the rim has anything to do with aerodynamics, I don't know. Or even stability, I haven't tried any wind gusts yet, I've had a few side winds but not really gusty side winds. So what the whale fins, the benefit of that, I haven't felt it. Uh, maybe it just looks nice. And the same with the golf ball effect on it. Uh, they just perform like any other wheel set. Mind you, uh, they're very agile, so you can throw them around and sprint or on the hill climb when you're climbing the hills. You can feel you can throw your bike around a bit more side to side, whereas a deeper section rim, it tends to just want to stay steady in one line. Um, you know, the deeper section rim might be a bit stiffer as well because the shorter spokes, deeper rim, you can put a bit more, you know, your power in and it equals power out. You probably get a fraction more maybe. Uh, that's about it, but of course you've got more weight uh, as well with a deeper section rim. And they're noisier. These are super, super quiet. They're stealthy quiet. These are the quietest wheels I've ridden bar, bar the low profile rim. A very low profile rim. So, no problems there. Uh, no, they're a very good wheel. Considering the number of spokes, there's only seven on one side and what, 14 on the other. So, considering the lack of spokes, which means more aerodynamics and much better, uh, I, I reckon they're, they're a very stiff wheel for what it is. So the spokes are obviously doing their job there as far as stiffness is concerned. So, very nice. And the spokes are not fat. <laughs> they're not fat spokes. They're wide spokes, but they're thin, very thin spokes. So to call them fat, fat spokes, they're not fat. Only for money, very good. Whether you're using carbon spokes or steel spokes, um, it doesn't really matter. The carbon spokes overall on any wheel is a bit quieter and a little bit stiffer, that's all. They do perform better. They are lighter wheels, they do perform better. So carbon spokes definitely perform better than the steel spokes in that, in that respect. I wouldn't be surprised in the future if all wheels, good quality wheels, are going to go carbon spokes and you probably won't see, see steel spokes anymore on your carbon rims. You know, maybe on the cheap ones, not on the good ones. So these wheels are excellent, really good value for money. Would I recommend them? Yep, absolutely. Go ahead, you won't be disappointed. Well, I haven't been so far. I can't see any reason why they're going to fail uh, now. So, yep, definitely really good and value for money. 
what were they, 900 and something dollars, 900, just over 900 bucks US, which is excellent for what they are. All right, there you go, got to sign off. See you next time.